The metaverse remains a hot area of technological development, and despite lukewarm interest so far from consumers, it's enterprise applications that are drawing the most attention in the market as companies build out their metaverse infrastructure. So what will it take to make the metaverse run? Joining me to discuss this is Jana Arbonis. She's the vice chair of Deloitte's U.S. telecom, media, and entertainment sector. So Jana, it's so great to have you with us. And can you paint a picture for us in terms of where we are in the evolution of the metaverse? In many ways, the metaverse and the use cases supported by metaverse technologies are already here. I do believe that we're just the beginning of an evolution that will have vast implications on how we work and live. And, and early, early examples of the metaverse um, are, are use of augmented reality, for instance, with digital filters on our phones, changing the way that we shop, right? Being able to try things on either on ourselves or in our home, um, or using spatial technology to enable a more immersive learning experience, right? To even leveraging digital twin technology to test efficiency of say a factory floor before you even have to break ground on construction. So I think these are all really important use cases that are already here and impacting again, the, the way that we work and live. But I do think that we're just the beginning of imagining really the art of the possible around how we actually harness this technology and the implications it can have longer term. There's been a lot of hype around this technology, but what are some of the use cases that you're seeing, particularly in the enterprise and industrial industries, because that seemed to be kind of the big buzz at the beginning of this year? Yeah, I think that's right, Alexis. Um, and I'll actually start with the industrial use case because I think they're probably more mature when it comes to delivering that really unique value to an organization that warrants the significant investment required, right, to harness this technology. So to be able to, again, go back to my previous example of being able to digitally build and lay out a factory in order to maximize efficiency um, and potentially save millions of dollars, that's really compelling for organizations, right? And again, willing compelling enough to make that investment to have that happen. Um, I would also say that metaverse technologies are being used to run, for instance, millions of simulations in order to make autonomous driving safer without relying solely on data that's gathered by you know, cars, um, these physical experiments, which are really costly um, and frankly dangerous um, at times. So again, that ability to sort of leapfrog um, that kind of physical um, you know, uh, exploration or, or uh, experimentation is really compelling. On the enterprise side, I think about training being one of the most interesting use cases from my perspective. And, and when you think about really highly specialized roles and those that can actually be highly dangerous, for instance, like in the oil and gas space or aerospace industries, Leveraging those technologies can better simulate like the real world experience and provide much better outcomes for companies in terms of employee preparedness and frankly, really reduce costs, right? And risk associated with conducting training in these real world environments, right? And enabling people to do it in a safe place that maybe doesn't require travel. So I think, again, that's a really compelling and obvious use case around why you might make an investment in that. Um, but I'd also say that just about every industry can benefit from leveraging metaverse technologies really around right now to facilitate co-presence and collaboration. That's something our firm and, and really every company is struggling with, you know, in terms of creating that more in-person engagement, but while still maintaining sort of a hybrid workforce. And so I think these technologies can really accelerate creating sort of a, a future of work experience that enables us not to have to return fully in in person, but to still be able to collaborate in a way that we thought was maybe only possible in person. Right. I think it's adjusting kind of to this uh, brand new world that we find ourselves in. And you talk a, a lot about the investment going into this. So what is the biggest priority for what needs to be built uh, in terms of infrastructure for this? And where are the priorities uh, for these companies? Yeah, it's a great question, because I think as, as excited as you said that, you know, everybody is, there's a lot of hype. There's still a lot of practical things that we need to navigate in terms of how we kind of support these experiences. So I would say, first off, you know, the networks from a telecom perspective, you know, the networks are pretty capable. We have 5G. Um, the benefits that 5G can provide will really support these experiences. But what we need more of is proliferation of these networks and maybe additional fixed wireless access 
which you know fundamentally will just enable the networks to support more devices and be able to support faster download and upload speeds, which will be required in order to have these more immersive experiences. Um, and I think we've all gotten pretty happy, you know, with our bandwidth and and the ability to download an app or a show kind of anywhere that we are. But in order to create a more immersive and interactive experience where I'm making decisions on the fly and you and I are looking at one another in, in the eye, you know, you need the faster download and upload. And so I think that is something that we will need to continue to focus on just in terms of, of, of having an, an interactive experience as opposed to just sort of that like download experience. And I think as investors, we're, we're looking at these companies that are, are putting investments in this area, but what about the companies that are building, you know, the so-called picks and shovels of all of this? Um, what opportunities do you see there for, as you mentioned, the 5G telecommunications companies and, and the chip makers out there that are making the parts that will make this whole ecosystem run? Yeah, and you're absolutely right around the chip makers. I mean, compute is absolutely essential to enabling these kind of metaverse technologies to do what they're designed to do. We need more compute and we need compute that's on the edge to enable that low latency experience. So we need chips that can handle increased loads, but are also small enough to fit into our phones, a pair of glasses, other connected devices that are enabling these experiences. Um, and, you know, that, that way we can have that compute happening locally, as opposed to the latency that might be, you know, have to occur to the extent that compute is happening, um, you know, at the center. So, the, you know, the compute power at the edge and the miniaturization required by that is, I would say, a real need for focus. We're talking about a computing power and, you know, artificial intelligence has been a, another big uh, buzzword uh, being talked about lately. You know, how does this AI technology factor into the development of the metaverse? Yeah, I think that AI um, is absolutely critical to the development of the metaverse, right? It's actually an under, it's, an, it's a technology that underpins it, right? When I was referring to um, kind of the, the use of digital twin technology to make autonomous vehicles safer, that's internal, that's artificial intelligence. That's learning from the simulations, that's creating the simulations and then learning from the simulation in order to develop you know, code that ultimately makes, you know, driving safer. So I think AI is, is really underpins all of that. Similarly, on the factory floor example that I gave you, similarly on training use cases, AI is going to be important in that. And, and that even then bleeds into sort of the generative AI. When you think about, you know, there's a lot of hype right now around generative AI that will play a really important role in some of these use cases I've described. So it's really at the center, I would say, and those two things need to work kind of in concert to really bring to life some of these uh, you know, use cases. So just to wrap up, what are the key takeaways then for investors? Are there any potential areas of development that you're most excited about, or are there certain areas that um, have maybe the biggest room for improvement? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, understanding, you know, from the get-go, I would say, you know, there is a lot of hype out there. And so I think from, from an investor's perspective, they need to really be thinking about those use cases that are really unique and really compelling and that will change behavior, whether in an enterprise or of a consumer. And I think um, there's a lot out there right now that maybe isn't super compelling and we don't see a high degree of adoption. So I think being really critical of like, what are the most appropriate use cases for this? I also think, you know, investors, to your point, need to be thinking about those companies that are, you know, building the, you know, focus on the building blocks of the metaverse, right? There, there may be smaller, more niche companies that are focused on perfecting certain elements of what will ultimately roll into a real manifestation of the metaverse. Um, and finally, I think, you know, one thing that people need to be really thinking about in terms of their ability to, to enter, you know, the metaverse and really start to embrace these technologies is the importance of ecosystems. As I mentioned, um, many of these use cases require significant investment kind of across the board. They also take time. I think ecosystems can actually help cut time to market, right? And thinking about how companies can partner together more closely, right? If you think about an entertainment company, do they really need to build a metaverse platform or could they partner with an ecosystem partner who has a platform and just build upon that? So I do think we're going to see a lot more, um, you know, alliances and ecosystem partnerships um, to accelerate kind of time to market. Um, and so, again, I think investors need to be looking for, you know, these companies that will be intermediaries um, and help to create sort of these bring these use cases to life more quickly. Well, Jana, thank you so much for your insights today. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. And you can head on over to investors.com for more of our metaverse and tech coverage.
For Investors Business Daily, I'm Alexis Garcia.